Hello scouts, it's Mr. Kugler again out by the fire pit. Today I've got my tripod made from some sticks and a little bit of lashing skills there with the tripod lashing. With my 12 inch regular Dutch oven hanging over a bed of wood coals over this camping cook fire. Not overly aggressive, nice even heat there. And today I'm gonna to be doing Boy Scout stew. This was inspired from a recipe out of camp cooking, 100 years by the National Forest Museum, National Museum of Forest Service. And this is a great book uh, with some great ideas in it for recipes around a Dutch oven. We're gonna start with some ground beef that we're gonna brown with some onions and garlic. Uh, when that's all cooked, we're gonna add a can of tomato sauce, some pureed uh, tomatoes, some mixed vegetables. Uh, you know, the ground beef cooked in the onions and garlic is gonna give it some nice flavor. We'll look to add some salt and pepper. Maybe if you like it kicked up a notch or two, you could even add a little bit of uh, chili powder to it. And uh, at the end, to be able to make this a little more filling, I'm going to add some water that I've heated separately in a pot, and then some of these quick cook noodles. These are elbows that I'll add to this pot, and this will make a nice, delicious meal. So let's take a break. I'll come back, and we'll start cooking by browning up the beef along with those onions and garlic that I prepared ahead of time and uh, labeled in a bag, ready to go. All right, so let's get going on making our Boy Scout stew. Our Dutch oven is nicely preheated. I'm gonna practice some safety here by putting on some Dutch oven gloves to be able to remove the lid safely. This is one of those situations where a Dutch oven lid lifter would probably be a little difficult getting in there. And uh, one of the things I'm going to do now is I'm going to put on some gloves because I'm going to be handling some raw meat here. So what I don't want to do is create a problem for myself by having raw meat on my hands afterwards. I'm going to add a little bit of vegetable oil in the bottom of my Dutch oven. And what I'm doing now is just trying to move it around a little bit to uh, make sure that that oil totally coats the bottom of that Dutch oven. Now what I'm going to do is add my garlic and onions that I cut at home. You can hear that sizzle. And what I'm gonna do is just get these going a little bit. I want to be careful not to burn the garlic. Now, if I find that my Dutch oven here is too hot, I can take and raise it up without having to change the fire. Now, you notice I have my ground beef here and uh, get a shot for the side camera. These little pouches, although a lot of times we like to see the meat we're eating, what I like about these little pouches is they're less likely to leak in with all your other food. We've all been in that situation where by the time we get to using our meat, it's drained juices all in our cooler and it's created a problem for us. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna, and it also comes out of the packet nice and easy here. So I'm using two pounds of beef. This is actually about double the uh, recipe in the cookbook because I found that two pounds of meat tends to be more appropriate for a patrol of scouts. One of the things you have to be very careful of when you're using a Dutch oven on a tripod is making sure that you're handling it safely. It's gonna have a tendency to wanna to move around on this rope. Or if you use one of those metal tripods that has just a, an S hook on it, there's not gonna be a lot of friction where it connects there and it's really gonna to wanna to, uh, move around a lot. 
Now I'm gonna cook down this beef. I'm trying to break it up a little bit so I don't have gigantic meatballs uh, here so I can get it so it cooks evenly. And I'm mixing that onion and garlic within the meat. That'll help keep that garlic from burning if it was just on the bottom of the uh, Dutch oven. Plus it's mixing those flavors around. So I'm gonna let that beef brown up and uh, I will think about later on putting my lid on. I think right now I'm gonna leave it off uh, so I could keep an eye on this Dutch oven with the brown beef going there and I'll just keep stirring it till it's evenly cooked and the meat is broken down and separated into finer pieces and then we'll move on to our next step. Probably been maybe 10, 15 minutes. My ground beef is nicely browned. I got a leaner cut, meaning there was less fat in the meat. So this ground beef mix was a 90-10, meaning 90% meat, 10% fat. And uh, so there's not a lot of uh, fat that's left in here. If I had gotten a fattier cut, uh, more than the 10%, I may want to drain off some of this fat safely by removing the pot, using a spoon to scoop it out and, and uh, disposing of it in a can. The next thing is that we're going to do is basically adding a bunch of canned items. I took and I opened up this can while the meat was browning. Do yourself a favor, make sure you have a good can opener. Uh, nothing's worse than struggling trying to open up cans with a, an inexpensive can opener. So I'm just going to, this is our parade tomatoes. This is a 20 ounce, 28 ounce can. Now I have a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. And why don't I give that a little stir and incorporate that. Again, I have my Dutch oven glove on. And now what I'm going to do using my bag that the garlic and onions came in as my spoon holder. Um, I'm going to add the mixed vegetables and I'm going to use the juices that are in the mixed vegetables, the water. I'm just going to leave it in there. And you notice I also bought some of these cans that have the pop off lids. It just makes life a lot easier uh, when we're camping. I'm going to dump those in. And part of the reason why I like having the juices in there is when I go to add my pasta later on, that rapid cook pasta, I'm going to have to supplement some water in here. And I might as well just use the water that's in the vegetables to help in that regard. I'll still have to add some more. Um, and it's one less thing I have to worry about as I practice my leave no trace principles out in the outdoors, having dispose of that water uh, in a safe manner to protect the environment. What I'll also do now before we take a break is I'm going to add a little bit of cracked pepper. You want to be able to season your dishes to how you like it. You may want to be a little careful on this. I'm going to hold, I have salt, but I'm going to hold off on the salt uh, just because I know the vegetables and all may be a little salty. I'm going to add a little bit of, um, and I'm going to put it into the lid here because I took the whole lid off. I'm going to add a little bit of cayenne pepper. Honestly, I'm not very big on the hot side of things, the chili kind of taste. Uh, others in my family are, so we'll compromise a little bit here and add a little bit, but you can spice it to your flavor, to what the likes are of your uh, patrol and troop mates that'll be sharing in this dish with you. So we're gonna take a break now. We're gonna let this come up to uh, temp. Well, Scouts, it's been probably another 15 minutes or so. Our Boy Scout stew is bubbling. Now, what I could have done in preparation for our quick cook cook pasta is I could have added the amount of water that I thought I needed into the pot and got it up to temperature now. What I chose to do instead was I took on my other stove and I heated, or on the stove, I heated up a pot of water. Now, I heated up about three cups of water. I'm gonna add about two of those in here um, because I can always add more. Difficult to remove others you know add remove water if I added too much and now what I'm going to do is just simply pour in this quick cook pasta 
using a pound and it's gonna it's gonna fill up this pot I can assure you that but the good thing is we're not looking to boil this we're simply looking to incorporate this into and let it swell up a little bit once I get this mixed in I'm gonna just eye it I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of that water because as I look in it as I incorporate it um, I think that pasta which is gonna swell up is gonna take on that water so I'm gonna add the rest of that what was three cups of water to go along with a pound of quick cook noodles I'm just going to stir this around well and we'll let that simmer. So I have to admit, Scouts, when I dumped that extra cup of water in here, I thought, oh my God, this thing's going to be soup. I put too much water in, but I got to tell you, it was the perfect amount. Uh, the noodles had to come up to temp. You know, I had a box that was sitting that was, you know, room temperature. And that water had to come up a little bit because it had cooled down a little bit. But if you can see in the tight shot, this is not at all like soup. This truly exemplifies the name stew. And uh, this nice hearty meal. I just remember all the good times that I've had out camping where we've had this, especially on a winter outing. And boy, if this isn't a great meal uh, to have uh, when you're out in the winter, when it's colder out, or just looking for a quick meal. So like I mentioned, quick, easy meal to make. You can make it on a stovetop or like we did today with our tripod over a wood fire. And uh, think about all the different variations you could do. Maybe some different vegetables. Uh, who knows, maybe you even want to do some minute rice in this instead of the noodles. Uh, maybe you want to use ground turkey uh, or ground chicken instead as your meat instead of beef. So think about different ways that you can use your Dutch oven and I hope you enjoyed uh, this opportunity to see a different take on outdoor cooking and I hope you have an opportunity soon to get outside and have some fun and create your own cooking adventures.